Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me today. We are reading Exodus 26 this morning, continuing to read the Bible live every single day. And I pray everyone had a wonderful uh, Shabbat yesterday. Uh, we had a wonderful reading yesterday. And uh, here we are, Exodus 26 this morning. Good morning uh, to uh, everyone who's uh, watching uh, this morning. Thank you for joining us. We're continuing to see the instructions for the tabernacle in the wilderness. And before we get into that, we're going to read the Shema. And uh, if you're watching for the first time, we're on live every single day during the week around 5.30 a.m. And on the weekends here around 10 a.m. And, and it's so important to read every single word of Scripture. And I know that there are certain things uh, that do not seem significant. And I am telling you, this Bible are the words of our Creator. And, and He was very selective in what he wanted us to find and what he wanted us to be revealed to in these things. We don't always know why. We don't always understand these things. Uh, there's so many names and lineages and ages and numbers and instructions for the for Noah's Ark and a tabernacle of, of what wood to use and how long it should be, as short it should be. Why he gives us these precise instructions uh, are not clearly known all the time. But what is known is he gave them to us. And every word of the Bible is uh, from our creator. It says Moses wrote down all the words our creator told him, not just some, but all of them. And uh, we're going to be looking at this chapter today, which is a chapter many people either skip over or they just don't get, they don't understand. And, and we're going to try to dig deeper into it today and do our best as we as we, as we look at the veils and, uh, on this, and, and we're not going to try to get too ahead of ourselves and look at the veil ripping with Yeshua. We're just going to try to figure out, well, why did he give it to these people and where were we at then? Before we do that, we want to get to the uh, uh, the Shema so, uh, to open up. So Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kavo, Mahu Tov, Leolam Va'ed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, everybody. So we are reading 26 of Exodus. And before we read 26 of Exodus, I want to, uh, chapter 26, I want to give you a verse or give you a scripture. And that is Isaiah 52, I'm, I'm sorry, 53, verse 2. 53, verse 2 of Isaiah says, and My servant grew up in Yahweh's presence like the tender green shoot like a root in a dry ground. And here's the point I want to bring out. It says, there was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. So here we see, of course, uh, prophesizing about the Messiah, the wonderful Messiah and everything he did and was to come. And uh, as we look at this, we think about, uh, this wonderful note here in the Hebraic Roots Bible, which says, uh, it is not physical beauty that attracts people to the servant, but him being filled with the spirit of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, we see Yeshua come as just a, a, a typical man, uh, not looking any different in splendor and, and everything he's doing and everything he does, but uh, what attracts people to him. Uh, is is the amazing uh, spirit uh, of Yahweh just flowing through him. So uh, now we're going to turn to Exodus 15, 26. We're going to read Exodus 15, 26 this morning. But that is something to consider uh, when, when we think about this and what we're reading. And now I want to look at Exodus 15, 26, the plans for the tabernacle. And let's get into this and think about the fine, minute details that Yahweh gave in his instructions and how he supplied the people in the wilderness with the tools to complete this wonderful 
magnificent tabernacle in the desert. Uh, so so let's let's <clears throat> let's think about that for a second here and just uh, consider that. I mean, if I go and I get uh, furniture from let me let me clear that up a little. All right, if I go and I get some furniture from uh, IKEA or somewhere, it comes with a whole booklet of instructions to put together a little bookcase. And if you get a complicated desk, now you're really looking at some work. And and, and so uh, I get you know this and the instructions. What the instructions tell me is how to put this together. And to be honest, what I usually do is. Uh, uh, what I usually do is I'll, th I'll put the, throw the instructions away and just try to figure it out myself. And it might work, but every time I have an extra screw, a screw left over or a couple of extra things left over, and I'm like, I wonder where this went. But it's still standing and it looks good to me. But Yahweh didn't want uh, the children to do that with the, with the tabernacle. He wanted them to follow exactly the instructions, just like he wants us uh, <clears throat> to follow uh, the exact instructions when it comes to uh, his Torah. He doesn't want us to just guess or use our opinion or judgment. He wants us to follow them precisely. And that's why he gave it to us to precisely for us to follow. So you understand uh, that the final product, uh, we want to be of him and not of our own imagination of what he wants. That's very important. And it was the same thing with this magnificent tabernacle in, in the desert here. So, uh, so here we go. So uh, 26, it says, uh, may, and we just finished looking at the beginning of the tabernacle. And go to YouTube and type tabernacle in the desert or tabernacle. And I have, uh, I thought yesterday I said it was in my video, but it wasn't on my Torah portion. But if you go to YouTube, you type tabernacle. I just saw it right before I did this video during my study. Uh, if you go in. Uh, into uh, on it, they show the 360 view of going into the tabernacle. It shows the menorah stand, and there's several of them out there now, more than when I first saw it. And you go in, you go through the curtains, and you see the Ark of the Covenant, and you see the angels on top. It's just magnificent, beautiful, beautiful. So it says, "Made the tabernacle from curtains of finely woven linen." Finely woven linen. So if you go to the store today, Bed Bath and Beyond, a Walmart, or somewhere. You know, I'm a guy, what, you know, and I'm going to go buy sheets. I'm looking for the cheapest sheets. That's it. You know, but women are looking for like uh, this uh, 300 or 400 or whatever, 800 knit sheets that are, and, and, and you feel the difference. I mean, when you get those sheets, you feel the difference. I mean, this is finely woven or knit together, whatever you want to say, versus these sheets feel like, like you're sleeping with just literally paper. <laughs> There's a big difference. So, of course, there's also a big difference in the price because it was a lot more work to make this. Well, I could just imagine when he says, uh, make the tabernacle from, from 10 curtains of finely woven linen. You could just imagine how fine this was. When our creator says to make it fine, how fine it was. And, uh, you know, you just say make it of, uh, uh, make the tabernacle of curtains. But curtains are finely woven linen. And it says, uh, decorate the curtains with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. So what this means here, and think about it, most people just read right over this, and, and, and it is powerful. It says, deck the curtains with, uh, with blue, purple, scarlet, and scarlet thread. And these colors had a tremendous significance for ro royalty. And, and and there were other meanings to them as well, and and the blue dyes that they were getting wasn't just some uh, synthetic made dyes that you would get from the local shop. These were like carefully carefully made, and this is one of the reasons why the the, the rabbis today in their tzitzit they don't wear the blue cord, which we're commanded to do, because it's it's I think nearly impossible to get this dye from this fish uh, or from the from the ocean where. Where, where this dye is made from. So they figured if we can't get the real, we don't want the imitation. But I see it says have the blue coordinate regardless. We have to have it. Uh, so so we have to have it. But uh, but this is but this is how far they went to get this. They said, so make the curtain of scarlet, uh, a, a scarlet thread uh, contains blue and purple and scarlet, blue and purple, these beautiful 
a royalty, uh, royal colors that had so much significance to them. And then it says, in the same, uh, and it says, with fully embroidered charm on them. So angels, literally angels. And if you see in the picture on YouTube of that video, you see the curtains with the colors and literally uh, cherubim, angels uh, on there. So they must have known what these angels looked like. I mean, it's been recorded many times before that they've seen angels, but literally they, they had the angels on top of the Ark of the Covenant and they had the angels uh, on, on, on the curtains here. So, so they, they clearly must have had a description of what the angels looked like. It says that these 10 curtains, so now it's 10, the 10 curtains, must be exactly the same size, 42 feet long and six feet wide. So 10 curtains, so now you get an idea of the tabernacle, 10 curtains, and this is a 40, 42 feet long and six feet wide. Six feet wide and 42 feet long. So that's the curtains, each, each one of them. So you can imagine six feet times 10, that's 60 feet. That's, that's, that's a good size and length tabernacle. 42 feet long, you know, uh, so so you, you get in a picture of, of how wide and long this thing was. It says, join five of the curtains together and make one long curtain, and then join the other five into a second long curtain. And as it gives these instructions of the tabernacle, it also talks about, you know, which side of the, of the tabernacle you enter and you exit and everything, literally everything. You know, when I got uh, my first house, somebody said, oh, that house is great. It has southern exposure. I didn't know what they meant, but apparently it's better to have a house with southern exposure. You get more of the sunlight throughout the day or something. Well, uh, all these instructions are given in a tabernacle, what side it should face, what entrances go in and out of, what side, and it, it, like to the finest detail. It says, so now you're joining these curtains together on each side. You have now the 10 curtains, or five on each side. Put loops of blue yarn along the edge of the last curtain in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one curtain are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other curtains. Now we're just reading these instructions, not moving forward. We're just looking. This is what they were doing. This is the instructions they had. While they were out there looking for the promised land, where's the promised land? He said, well, slow down. Before I take you to the promised land, I'm going to have you make this tabernacle. They figured, okay, well, we'll just throw up some, uh, you know, a, a, a Sukkot or something and throw some branches on there. No, he wants them to make this fine, this fine building. Uh, it says, make 50 gold clapses and fasten it to the long curtains together with clapses. In this way, the tabernacle will be made of one continuous piece. Make 11 curtains of goat hair cloth uh, to serve as a tent covering for their tabernacle. So now you have the 11 curtains of goat hair on the top of the tabernacle. So you have the walls and now you're looking at the top of the tabernacle. These 11 curtains must be exactly the same size, 45 feet long and six feet wide. And uh, I haven't done yet the study of these particular numbers and these sizes. Uh, but I wouldn't doubt if there was a significant to the, all the different holes and the numbers that they were adding up to. Uh, but we look at that. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain and join another six into a long curtain. Allow three feet of material from the second set of curtains to hang over the front. Of the sacred tent, make 50 loops for one edge of the lodge curtain then make 50 bronze claps and fasten the loops of the long curtains with the claps. In this way, the tent covering will be made of one continuous piece. So they're making all of this. They're putting all these parts together so they can all come together as one. Okay, I mean, I don't want to get into significance and get too far off past here, but think about this. It's taking all of this and bring it together as one continuous piece. The remaining three feet of the tent covering will be left hanging over the back of the tabernacle. Allow 18 inches of remaining material to hang down each side. So the tabernacle is completely covered. Complete the, the tent covering with a protective layer of tanned ram skins and a layer of fine goat skin leather. So now they're, 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 he's, he's given the instructions of completing this tabernacle. 
form the framework of the tabernacle, uh, construct frames of a sea of wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and 17 inches wide with two pegs under each frame. Make all the frames identical. Make 20 of these frames to support the curtain on the south of the tabernacle. Also make 40 silver, uh, 40 silver ba uh, bases, uh, two bases under each frame with the peg pegs fitting securely into the into uh, into the bases for the north side of the tabernacle make another 20 frames with their 40 silver boxes two bases on each frame so now if you know about uh green construction or constructing without nails i know someone had a whole house built with just pegs and things like this uh, this was the form they used back then, and they're using it in a tabernacle. And of course, the question comes to mind, where are they getting all this wood and all this material and everything else? Well, you have to realize five people didn't come out of Egypt. You had, you had, you had so many people that came out in this big community, and they, and apparently they were taking these things with them, or they, they somehow found some traders in the desert. Uh, but the key is that Yahweh provided for them, and he's given them these instructions uh, and the materials to make it happen. He will not ask us to do something that we did not have the capability of doing. He would not do it. And uh, and so it says, make six frames for the rear and the west side of the tabernacle, along with two additional frames and, and reinforce the rear corners of the tabernacle. These corner frames will be matched at the bottom and firmly attached to the top with a single ring. Form a single corner unit make both of these corner units the same very way so there will be eight frames to the rear of the tabernacle and six a set in 16 silver base two bases uh, under each frame make the crossbars of the sea wood uh, to link the frames so continuing with this construction of the tabernacle here uh, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the north side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which will face west. The middle crossbar attach halfway up the frame, which will run the way from one end to the tabernacle to the other. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the pattern which you were shown in the mountain. So now we're going to stop right there a second and says, according to the pattern you were shown. Let's see, that's verse 30. And let's see what verse 30 here is. Verse 26, 30 in the One New Man Bible. Verse 30 says, And you shall set up the tabernacle according to the decree which you were shown in the mountain. So uh, we see here two different words here, but uh, according to the instructions that were given, the pattern is, is nice because you have uh, sewing involved here and things, but to the decree that you were shown. Uh, so, so, so the instructions were given. It says you were shown in the mount, uh, on the mountain uh, when the Torah was given. So the instructions were given of how to make this happen and how to do this. And then it gets into the inside of the tabernacle. Remember, even though you had this splendor-looking building on the outside, the real meaning of it is what's on the inside. And it says, for the inside of the tabernacle, make a special curtain of finely woven linen. And this is a different curtain than the ones that were already spoken about. It says, decorated with blue and purple and scarlet thread with skillfully embroidered cherubim. Again, it looked the same, but remember, uh, we'll see that the size of it is different too. It says, hang the curtain of gold hooks Attach four pieces of Essia wood. Overlay the post with gold and set them in four silver bases. Hang the inner curtain from the chest and put the Ark of the Covenant in the room behind the curtain. It will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Hallelujah. It'll separate the holy place from the most holy place. And I am going to highlight that right there as a scripture of the day. Separating the holy place from the most holy place. You see, we have in the world today, the holy versus the profane, the holy, the, the righteous versus the unrighteous, the, the wicked versus the righteous, the good versus the bad, the evil versus the good. You have these complete opposites. 
but within a creator's special place, what do you have? You have the good and you have the better. It's all good. It's all good. You know, and this curtain is separating from the holy place, which is set apart to the most set apart place, the set apart of the set apart. And that's the calling for us as believers, not only to be set apart, but to be amongst the set apart of the set apart, taking it to the next level. It's one thing to accept Yeshua as Messiah, but it's a whole nother level to go and, and follow the ways and follow the Torah. You are now becoming the set apart of the set apart. And this is what he says right here, separating the holy, not from the unholy, but the holy from the extra special holy. And we'll look at this more later on as we get into uh, revelations and other books in scripture and, and talks about, okay, there's the holy and then there's the extra holy, the set apart of the set apart. And it's, it's a powerful, important thing to understand. He just doesn't settle for, you know, this is my set apart. He said, no. He says there will be a holy place and then a most holy place, even more holy than the holy. Different levels, different, different levels. You know, and that's why it says in the scriptures when it says, those that do the least of my commandments will be called uh, the lowest in the kingdom of the heavens. You know, so, so, so there's different levels. But those that keep my instructions will be called the, the best. So uh, verse 20, that was our verse of the day. So now we go to uh, verse 34. And then put the ox cover. Uh, the place of atonement, uh, the, uh, the place of atonement, on the top of the ark of covenant, inside the most holy place. Somebody say most. We need to be the most holy people, not just holy people. The most holy people. Uh, place the table outside the inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle, and place the lampstand across the room on the south side. Now, how many of you right now watching? could look around the room you're in right now and know where north, south, east, and west is immediately. You know, and to think that, you know, if you got this stuff wrong here, I, I, I would think there were consequences because this is the creator's most holy place. So it goes on to say, uh, it says here, place the, ta the table outside the inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and place the lampstand across the room on the south side then in verse 30 uh in uh, verse 36 make another curtain for the entrance to the sacred tent make it of finely woven linen and embroidered with uh, it, it, uh exquisite designs exquisite designs embroidered this with and use purple and scarlet thread craft five posts from assia wood overlay them with gold and hang the curtain from there with gold hooks Cast five bronze bases for the post. Now, this is a very expensive uh, building, as we discussed last time. Uh, and this wasn't even a permanent structure. And, and, and they're using so much, so much uh, expensive things in there. You know why? Because it's, it's, it's a set-apart place. And it's even more set-apart than the set-apart. It's, it, it's, it's the most set-apart. And this is just the beginning, because then we're going to get into the court guard, courtyard and where they burn the sacrifices, and we're going to get into it. But really, you can go on YouTube again and see that video of the 360 view of this. Uh, but, but we see now we have the, the, the instruments for inside the tabernacle. Now we have the tabernacle. Now we have the separation. We have the holy place and then the most holy place. And then it's going to give the instructions of, of what these places were and, and, and what to do with, with these different things. So... Uh, it's really, really significant and powerful, uh, and we do. And we started off today seeing, uh, and even though this building looked magnificent, uh, when Yeshua was discussed in, in Isaiah 53, verse 2, uh, it wasn't the outside that was important. It was the inside. It is the inside. And when we think about that, we think about our walk and our life. And so many people in this world are focused on the outside, but it's the inside that's important. You know, and this uh, this moving tabernacle is no longer there. The temple is no longer there. But we have a tabernacle within us, on the inside of us. And Yahweh wants the finest, the, the finest of the finest. He wants us to, to be part of. 
and, and to be uh, mimicking of Yeshua, our Messiah. He's told us over and over again not to imitate, not to imitate the, the ways of the wicked, but to, to, to be a shadow or a picture or, or an example of uh, the attitude of Yeshua. And hallelujah, hallelujah. So uh, this is significant here in the wild, in the wilderness. He still provides for you to have uh, what's going to meet your needs. Hallelujah. So uh, for those of you that are looking for that tabernacle picture, again, just look at tabernacle. Uh, what I do, what I'll do is uh, I'll go and I'll post it below the video. Uh, once I uh, upload this video, I'll post it below the video. We'll be back tomorrow uh, for, with uh, 27 um, for more for the plans for the altar and the burnt offering. Uh, we'll, we'll do this tomorrow here at uh, uh, 530 in the morning uh, if, if you're ready for that. And again, this is a difficult part for people to get through scripture is why do they need to know this and see this. But when you understand uh, uh, the significance of, of following Yahweh's instructions, we don't need to ask why. We need to ask, you know, just, you know, why not? I got to do this because he said to do it and no other reason. So I'm, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this. So hallelujah. That was verse 26. And uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Please put your comments and questions below. And remember, the first thing you read when you wake up and the last thing you read before going to sleep is what you remember. So make it scripture. We need to pray, praise, proclaim, read and repent and submit. Shalom, everybody. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Let other people know. And thank you for watching. Shalom.